told me it's an apostle. I said, forget it. Because if you are, you won't get no sleep. You won't get any peace until you start seeking God in that office. And the heavier that office of the anointing is, the more suffering you're going to have. So I hope that you, you know, I, for your sake, I hope you're not, but for God, for the sake of the Lord, I hope you are. If you understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. We have a crossless Christianity now. We're going to get in the Word. I'm just throwing this out. This is just a little icing on the cake. What time is this beer? Get, get me in the hands up on that thing. And we're, going to, we're going to get you out of here. And I told the uh, deacon the other night and, and the prophetess that we're going to be out of here at 9.15, no later than 9.30 every night. Hallelujah. God willing. The Lord spoke of that. Normally, we just go until we drop, but the Lord said that, but that's what we're going to do. So, there's Revelation 15. They're going to sing the song. Look at Revelation 15 just for a minute. How many knows last night in Deuteronomy 32, that is the, the preamble to the song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32 and 33. And Deuteronomy 33 goes into the oath to the tribes, what God will do with his people in the last days. What will befall thy people in the last days? These days. Hallelujah. And whether we have time for this revival or not, we will have a little study session, maybe someday during a weekend, maybe a Saturday afternoon or something, and uh, maybe just for the ministers, or maybe for everybody. It don't make no difference. And, and give you the oath to the tribes so you will know exactly what's going to happen to those tribes up there. You are those tribes. Hallelujah. What God's doing, God's mustering the, hope right, the host right now. God himself is wetting his glittering sword in heaven, and it's about to be revealed. He's going to put it into the hand of the slayer, and it's going to go forth, and it's going to slay both old and young. Old and young. Hallelujah. And it's going to be of the head of the righteous as well as the wicked. We saw that last night. Hallelujah. But at a time, why? Just to get us out of the flesh. But at a time that after you've suffered for a while, God established, strengthened, settled you, make you perfect. Now at that time, you're going to go into a higher glory. The church is going into a higher glory at that point. But don't you think that it's going to happen without you bearing your cross. Whatever that call is, there's a cross that goes with it. And that cross is for one reason, for you to destroy that flesh. And to whom much is given? Much is given, much is required. Much is required. So let, it ain't no easy way. What are you, somebody said, well, I wish I had what, what old Brother Brown had. I wish that I had, you know, I, I'm gonna do what he does. I'm gonna walk like he does and talk like he does because I want what he's got. But what you don't realize is Brother Brown has been shoving back from the table. He's got three 40-day fasts in his life. He says, praying constantly. He's gone through hell and high water and to remain faithful in God and stay faithful to the word for what he's got. Hallelujah. And God's got a call on you, Brother Alexander, a call that only you can do, just coming in the water. Hallelujah unto God. Moses, come out of the water. There's a man that brought you out of Egypt. That's a man. But where you're going, it's a priesthood going to get you over Jordan. You're going to take the promised land through a priesthood, not through one man. These days of one, one big preacher and all this mess is over. Mr. Big Shots are over. Ain't going to be no Mr. Big Shots. It's going to be the body of Christ moving as a man, Jesus Christ. When I say a man, I mean men and women of God walking as Jesus, talking as Jesus. And I'll tell you what, we'll get into that a little bit tonight, maybe, let you see the glory. Now, you don't talk about the, the tribulation and persecution that you're going to go through. If you talk about tribulation, how many of you know pastors and preachers around call themselves prophets, and they go through the land and tell you you've got to sell off for sake of all and everything else, and they're driving a Mercedes Benz, and there you are out there walking on the street while, they, while you're selling everything, and they're giving up everything, and they're and they, they writing books, and they're getting rich, and you're walking out there, and you ain't got nothing. What happened to that thing you laid, sold out everything you had, you laid them at the apostles' feet, and, and the apostles dealt to every man severally as they had need? What happened to that? In other words, when you take a man sold out money, and I've taken people sold out money, but you're welcome to come and understand and everything we God, we'll go this thing out down just, just like a community. Is that so? Hallelujah unto God. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the book of Acts, Jesus said, sell that you have and give alms. Provide for yourself treasures in the heaven. Then the disciples came along and, uh, 
and, and the book of Acts, and they did everything that Jesus said for all that had lands and houses, possessions, sold them, and laid them at the apostles' feet. But did they go out and they were broke from then on? No. Because at that point, they became one conglomerated body. And there, no man had need of nothing. For the apostles dealt to every man severally as he had need. Well, I wonder if that old prophet, you know, you sold out to and gave, gave all your money to, several thousand dollars, and he's driving that brand new uh, 550 SEL. I wonder if he's got, you've got all things common. Give me the keys to your bins. I wonder if that's common too. I mean, I, wanna, I need to go around the block. I've seen them sell out everything they had, and they wouldn't even pick them up and give them a ride to the, cor the corner down there. I've seen it. Hallelujah unto God. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There's a day of judgment. There's a day of judgment. And how you've dealt it out to other people is how it's going to be dealt out to you. Hallelujah. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. I don't want judgment. I want mercy. But you better show mercy if you want it. Hallelujah. Is this all right? Hallelujah unto God. All right. Now, there's a song of the Lamb and the song of Moses. Deuteronomy 32 is the song of Moses. The song of Moses is what's in play right now. For the Lord will judge his people. That is in the song of Moses. Now look at Revelation 15, if you will, just for a minute. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Somebody say hallelujah. Now that the Lord does, that's his business. <laughs> I got to cover myself somewhere. You know what I'm talking about, Providence. Hallelujah unto God. Somebody said, well, she don't prophesy that. You just hide and watch. She's going to be prophesying more than you ever thought. Hallelujah. You wait and see. It's so. He knows, she knows, she knows there's something there. And there's a big treasure chest sitting there for you. There's a treasure chest there full of jewels. And there are a sardius and a topaz and a carbuckle and a diamond and an amethyst and all that. And it's right there at your Thank you, Lord. hands. And all that you're about to do is open that chest up. And the Lord is going to pull out treasures out of there greater than anything you can think or imagine. And those treasures will be the reason that you will walk and stand in the evil day while all the wicked fall. So you don't understand. Somebody said, don't tell me what I don't understand. You don't understand. In Ezekiel 13, it says, your prophets are like the foxes in the desert. You know what a fox is? It's a little foxes that, just, that, that spoil the vines. They're always nipping and nipping and nipping and, nipping and eating your flesh and, and, and taking advantage of you. And then when you go over and you look at them and you hit them like that and they all run. Whoop, whoop. And, run off. and here they come back again. Yip, 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 I don't got nothing for foxes. And it's the little foxes that spoil the vines, those big foxes that go ahead and, and literally kill the body of Christ. The tradition of the elders have made the word of God in effect. Now, this ain't tradition. You know that. Hallelujah unto God. Ain't no tradition here. Somebody said, well, I hope it ain't right, Brother Beard. Okay, we got something ahead of us that's going to be bigger than anything we can even think or imagine. But that's all right, because it'll be out of the book, and then God will confirm it. Don't you believe me? If the Lord deals with you at night in your old prayer room, in your prayer chamber, and he confirms that word, then you better take heed. Hallelujah unto God. Hallelujah. I'm going to answer for God for every word said under this tent. Hallelujah. And you're going to answer to God for every word that you hear or you don't hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you receive it, receive the truth. Well, then in, uh, in Revelation 15, we got that song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, and it's the Shur Kahadash and the Shur Kadash. The Shur Kahadash is the feminine song of Moses. Now, when you look at Revelation 15, and we'll hit over there about the, the uh, glorification in a minute. If a prophet just prophesies doom and gloom, doom and gloom, doom and gloom, you're going to have judgment, 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 but you never tell me about the glory I'm going to receive. Then it is what is called a doomsday prophet. You're all doom and gloom, but you've seen no glory. You tell me about all the sufferings of the cross, but you don't tell me the glory it's going to bring in me. 
you are doom and gloom. I will have nothing to do with a doom and gloom prophet. I'm not going to sell out to make you rich so you can tell me how stupid I am. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? And they're going through the land right now. Hallelujah. But God right now is raising the apostles, the apostles' doctrine in present truth, which seems a little different to the church, but as the church hears it, it's going to bring birth pangs and it's going to bring forth a man-child. That's a sure kadash. That's a song of the Lamb, the song of Jesus, the new song. It is a sure kadash. Sure is a song, kadash, of the Lamb, you see. All right. Now, in Revelation 15, all right, sit there and get mad at me. And I saw another sign in heaven. There's all kinds of signs flying around here, ain't it? I saw a great wonder in heaven. That's a great sign. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon and under her feet. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars, she cried, travailing in pain to be delivered and brought forth a man-child. Well, a man-child has a different spirit. I don't mean it's the same Holy Ghost, but it has a greater, a more grown, a more uh, paternal than maternal spirit. Hallelujah. In other words, God's calling that church to bring forth Jesus, the whole church to bring forth the perfect man unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statue of Jesus Christ. She will not stay in the former glory she had in Pentecost. She can't live in Pentecost. In Leviticus, when you look at Leviticus 16, and he takes that, he takes that, uh, 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 the holy place, the sanctuary, and where we've been for 2,000 years in Pentecost. Hallelujah. And he takes all the priests and drives them out of the holy place. 24 orders of the priesthood. That's the reason you see those 24 elders in heaven. I need to do some drawing here, and I ain't got time to do it tonight. 24 elders and the four beasts and the four and 20 elders. The four and 20 elders are the ones that record the course of the priesthood, 24 different priesthood courses in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. They minister unto the lampstand, uh, the oil and the lamp, half egg oil in each one of the lampstands, 22 knops of bowls and etc. That's their job. To, to eat the shrew bread, put new shoe bread on there. Face bread, continual face bread for God. Why? Because you don't eat the same stale manna that you had yesterday. It's got to be fresh new manna, new fresh bread, face bread every every week, every Sabbath, Sabbath, every every new moon, every Sabbath, every high holy day has to be new fresh bread. Hallelujah unto God. And then you've got to have that altar of incense whereby you are fasting, dedicating, and consecrating yourself with a ram. If you give a ram, a ram is always the, the dedication, of the, the offering of dedication. Uh, a goat is for sin. A bullock's for a priest. A ram is for your sanctification. It's for your dedication. It's the ded dedication of a ram. Well, that's the reason that that altar, there's a ram and that ram's horn, your dedication are the ones that they they take a ram's horn off, which is a shofar, and blow it. You have to have that dedication in order to hear the shofar in the last day or the trumpet. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain and cry alas, alas for the day. For the day of the Lord cometh its nine hand as a destruction from the Almighty. So shall it come. If you don't have the ram of consecration and take that ram's horse, which is the trumpet it's talking about there, the shofar, you can't see it, you can't hear it. It'll pass right over your head. It's all in your dedication, your love for God. It's a, it's a state of the heart. It's not whether or not you love, you love your job and you love your family. It's how much you love God. It's a state of your heart. That's going to determine your destiny. Your destiny, when God, whether you make it or you don't, is all in your heart. Guard your heart, for out of it proceed all the issues of life. And I'm not talking about life down here on 123 Easy Street. I'm talking about life in God, the God life. Hallelujah. Now, with that said, look at uh, Revelation 15. I saw another sign in heaven. Now, this sign, Jesus said he would show signs in the heavens. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke, didn't he? Hallelujah. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. What was the blood? 
What was the blood? He showed signs of heaven, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. Fire. Well, you